Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm sure glad you joined us. We're going to have a great show. I got Dr. Dan Fries, a veterinarian from the Beef Cattle Institute, that's going to be joining us today to talk about identifying sick cattle with bovine respiratory disease. Sure glad you joined us. We've been here for 42 years now. We run around 2,500 cows. Well, I bought a couple loads of ca cattle out of cows, black cows out of California. I noticed these cows are kind of a off color, rusty color. We're going to be processing these cows in the next few days, and at that time, I will inject Multimin into them to uh, help uh, take care of their copper deficiency. I would recommend Multimin to you know, any, any cow man, and it's been effective. This segment is brought to you by Double D Family Mat Shop. Injured livestock could mean injured profits. Protect yours with no slip mats from Double D Family Mat Shop. Welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Dan, and I'm joined by Dr. Dan Fries, who's a veterinarian here at the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and sure glad you joined us. Thank you, Dan, and glad to be on the show again. It's always fun to have you. Somebody with a lot of real world experience. Um, you know, you had your own practice and, and feeding facility and for, you know, eight to ten years, well, longer than that, <laughs> but yeah. uh, a lot of experience out there. But you also have training as, as a veterinarian and, and, you know, some of the stuff that you're doing here at the veterinary school, thought it'd be good to kind of have a discussion about what bovine respiratory disease is and how it's set up. Well, that's, that's, I think, a great topic to discuss, especially this time of year where we've got lots of calves coming into feed yards. Um, cattle that are higher risk for respiratory disease are temp typically younger. Yeah, let's just They're, start out with that. Let's just talk about when you're going to risk, put a risk on cattle, high risk and low risk, high health risk or high morbidity rates versus low morbidity rates. Which cattle are you lumping in this high risk group? cattle that have been under a lot of stress, so we've hauled them a long ways. Cattle that may have not seen a vaccination prior to coming into the feed yard, maybe they've just been weaned. Um, those kind of, those kind of cattle. Co-mingled. Li Co-mingled, light or late. Lots of different, yeah. Th yeah. Those kind of cattle are typically the cattle that we see a lot higher risk for. And those are the ones that I would, and our lower risk then would be those ones that are coming off of wheat pasture, grass traps, Know what a bunk out is. Of the out of the Flint Hills or the Sand Hills or those big one source group yeah. type of cattle. Cattle that have been weaned. We, we have well managed cattle versus what we call mismanaged cattle. Correct. Okay. So yeah. high risk and low risk. So when those cattle are coming in, is that one of the first things that you're doing when you're thinking is kind of gauging the risk of these? We, we assess the risk of those cattle and. Uh, um, it helps us determine how much we want to watch them, how, it, how uh, often maybe we write pens, um, how we handle them on arrival, um, just some of those things. And it just gives us an idea as to what our risk is and, and how likely we are to have a problem with high pull rates and cattle that are not going to eat well or things like that. Yeah. So, and, and so I see that the management step up, you know, immediately on these cattle that we recognize that are going to be higher higher risk coming in. So when we get down to it, what are some of the things, when cattle come off the truck, what are some things you're recommending? Um, Let's talk about the receiving pen. Okay, On, in the receiving pen, um, we want to have a high quality fresh feed in the bunk, uh, maybe some long stem hay, something that they recognize. Um, we're going to look at vaccinating them on arrival or shortly after. We may recommend um, metaphylactic administration I think, antibiotic. I think that leads us to a great spot to come back to kind of talk about the process and barn a little bit. Okay. And after the break, let's jump right in where we left off on the process and barn. Sounds good. Glad you joined us. We're sure glad you joined us. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. 
Be ready for breathing soundness exams with Neogen's new and improved ElectroJack 6. Features a new wireless design, improved waterproofing, and more power for quicker and easier collections. Its newly designed probe features a tapered angle for easier insertion, and new rubberized material adds durability. ElectroJack 6 can be used with rams, boars, and bulls of all sizes. To order or for more information, contact Neogen at 800-621-8829 or your local animal health distributor. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dan Fries, Dan Squared today, um, on the show. And we're talking about Dr. Squared, Dan Squared. And we're talking about high-risk calves. We're talking about identifying sick cattle. We're talking about some management of these these high-risk calves in the yard which as the more high-risk calves you have the higher risk your low-risk cattle become mm -hmm. because you're spending all your time with these cattle and and so we talked about the processing barn what are some things let's bounce it back and forth some things that we do differently on high-risk calves when we process or or run them through the chute on arrival versus um, low-risk cattle well we uh we may select vaccines differently. We may add a metaphylactic protocol or add an antibiotic to every everybody, in part due to the difficulty of identifying sick cattle in a pen. Um, and uh, to just, re it reduces the morbidity. It allows us to um, treat cattle that are sick that we can't identify visually and reduces the risk of those cattle, and especially compared to um, if we had done nothing at all. I think it's important, you know, first of all, you and I both agree, always work with your local practitioner. Absolutely. Make sure you draw up, you know, the veterinarian knows your, your farm, they know your cattle, they know your labor, they yep. know your facility, they know how to help you manage the health yep. risk of these cattle. And and when you're picking out, now, metaphylaxis is a term that's used quite often, but, you know, what exactly is metaphylaxis? It's basically you select an antimicrobial product and you apply it to across the group on arrival on arrival okay some cattle could be sick that don't show clinical signs correct and and that's where the, uh, the a lot of the benefit of that kind of protocol comes into place is where we are actually treating sick cattle that we can't identify i've heard it said in in feed yards and feed yard all the veterinary means we go to that metaphylaxis will reduce your morbidity 50 percent that's so, a nice rule of thumb so if you're going to have 30% morbidity using metaphylaxis, you'd go to 15%. 15, yep. And so depending on whether you're trying to harvest <laughs> and other things that you're trying mm -hmm. to do, harvest corn or soybeans and uh, sorghum while you're bringing in high-risk calves, this might be a management tool. tool to free up some labor and reduce your risks. Decrease morbidity, decrease yep. more mortality. Yep. Okay, now, sick cattle. And, and moving these cattle out in the home pen. You know, what are, what's your number one, if you had one thing that you could 
look at in a calf to identify one that's sick, what would it be? I'm not sure I could, I would probably put time together and say it's to depression and gut fill. Okay. So cattle that don't eat get sick, cattle that get sick don't eat. Gotcha. So. And, and that would be mine too. I'm always looking for those Gantt calves, the ones, there's something just, either they're not competing or they're sick. Mm -hmm. And something's not right, they're not getting groceries. Yep, exactly. And so those cattle are higher risk, they're more likely to get sick, they're more likely to be sick. And so we're wanting to identify those cattle and bring them back in, do a little further diagnostic, take their temperature, look at them, maybe give them a antimicrobial. Let's come back and talk about pen riding after the break, and let's talk about identifying those sick calves out in the pen. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us today. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. I'm joined by a veterinarian here at the Beef Cattle Institute, Dr. Dan Fries. And uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on our staff here at the BCI. Yeah, they do a lot a of good things, here. teaching a lot of students, meeting producers, yeah. practitioners been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun to be back here at K-State. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're talking about sick cattle. Yep. And when we left, we're kind of, I kind of was pinning you down on one or two things, but really the DART acronym mm -hmm. has something that we've used as veterinarians or feed yard uh, pen riders and cattle managers for years. What does DART stand for? Uh, it's a great little teaching tool, uh, depression anorexia, respiration, and temperature. So this is so. for a calf that if you want to know the acronym for bovine respiratory disease clinical signs, we're using DART. Very much. All right. Yeah. So let's go through them. D, depression. D depression. What's a depressed calf look like? 
If they're standing, they're going to be standing head down. Typically, I would describe it as a calf with its head lower than its back, so you're going to see the head down. Um, ears may or may not droop. Um, dull eyes. Dull eyes. Um, not going to be paying attention to you as you enter the... Everybody else is paying attention to you, and that one's not, that kind of thing. Off by itself? Off by itself. Maybe at the back of the pen. They're kind of like me. Up eating. When I get sick, I just want to be by myself and and uh, get those calves. They, you'll see them standing off by themselves. Yep. Anorexia. That's what we talked about yep. before. But what is anorexia? Anorexia is just a lack of appetite or a lack of feed intake. And in a calf, we, we see that a lot as as you look at the calf behind the ribs, they'll be sunken in behind the ribs in that flank area. They won't have a lot of gut fill. They won't have a lot of feet in them. And they will just look thin and hollowed out, maybe a little dehydrated. So the, so we're looking for a depressed calf that's off feed, and then we bring in the R. The respiration. Um, these calves are going to be coughing. They're going to be breathing faster. Uh, if you think about an animal that has pneumonia, which is what respiratory disease is, you can't breathe as well, you don't have as much oxygen exchange, and one of the ways the body tries to compensate is you breathe faster. And also when you get in this, those times of heat stress with respiratory disease, you know, the calf cools itself mm -hmm. through evaporative cooling and respiration, and we knock out 25% of that air conditioner, we've... We've knocked out a problem. <laughs> All right. So rectal temp, normal rectal temp in a calf is 105 to 1035 um, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So you know, or what's your cutoff for when you're temping these calves? Is it 103.5? Or here's 104. Uh, different people saying that abnormal is different uh, for different cattle, but what's something that you use as a gauge for rectal temp? Uh, 103.5, 104, sometime in there. Um, depends a little bit on our environmental conditions. Um, if it's 110 out and it's yeah. in the middle of July, 104 might not be that much of a temperature, but at 50 degrees in October, it, it means a little bit more. So, um, but a lot of times these cattle that uh, have good, you know, have, have a respiratory infection set up will have a pretty good temperature. After the break, we're gonna just wrap up with Dr. Freeze on clinical signs of BRD. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. Facing extraordinarily high feed costs, hog producers need to be rethinking their market weight targets for their pigs. That's what Kansas State's Mike Tokash has been telling producers as he informs them of a new K-State analytical tool for calculating optimum market weights. We normally think that we should be marketing at 270 to 290 pounds with a lot of our plants. Right now, we really need to be closer to 245 to 260 pounds, which is a significant drop, and, and they will take some discounts on those pigs at those weights, um, but those discounts are, are still not great enough to offset the savings and feed costs to, to drop the weights down that low. Another example of what's happening in agriculture today from K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. If our local animal agriculture industry disappeared, what else would disappear? The buses that get us to school? The playgrounds and ballparks we go to after school? The books and computers that help us learn and grow? Animal agriculture provides millions of dollars in tax revenue that pay for our school improvements, that pave the foundation 
that will build our future. A message from U.S. soybean farmers and their checkoff. We've been using Multiman for about seven years. Uh, it's one of the most multi-use products that we have here on the farm. Bulls, cows, calves, weaning age cattle, just about everything on the place. If they go through the chute, they get a shot of it. The primary use that we started Multiman was on our, in our donor program, in our embryo transplant program. I'd recommend Multiman to any, any producer in the cattle business. Here at Deer Valley, every animal that goes through the chute gets a dose of Multiman. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dan Fries, and we're at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and we're talking about bovine respiratory disease. We just went through the DART acronym for the clinical signs, depression, anorexia, respiration rate, and elevated rectal temp. Now we need to go find them. Yep. Need to get out there whether you're walking or horseback or four-wheeling it. Whatever you do, yeah, any of those methods work, but being consistent on how what you do when you get in there, get the cattle kind of used to you, I think is a little bit important. Um, but uh, identifying the sick cattle in the pen can be one of the biggest challenges as cattle try to tend to hide their clinical signs. But as we get into these pens, um, get in there, ride through them, make sure we get everybody up. And um, it's important to get everybody up because lame cattle sometimes lame. will tend to stay down. Yeah, and they will look alert and they will look bright and they will look healthy. They might just have an injured foot and don't want to stand on it. Right. And we want to get them in and make sure we get that attended to. Yep. Um, do you have any method you cover the pen or just do it consistently? Um, try to wind through in kind of a serpentine type fashion mm -hmm. um, and uh, make sure we ride by the water tank every day, check yeah. it. Um, cattle that don't drink won't eat and will get sick. I've always told easy. the students, the other thing is you ever drive up the feed bunk and the feed is crowned, run to the water tank. Yeah. The reason why they haven't touched any feed is probably because they haven't had any water. Exactly. So exactly. Very important. Most important nutrient we have in the feed yard is water. I'm with you on that. <laughs> and so, so we go in there, um, and, and ride the pen. How many times a day are you riding on these high-risk calves? On high-risk calves, we might ride them twice a day. Um, if we're really having problems, um, one of the things that I used to do, and, and I thought was pretty effective, is drive by them in a pickup, mm -hmm. pretty slow. Cattle a lot of times think of someone in a pickup is not a threat, so they won't pay attention to you. I just carried a pair of binoculars with me, and I could see out there, and I would get a tag number and give it to the cowboys and say, go pull tag number so-and-so. and you know, we get a lot of farmer feeders uh, too, and, and one of the tricks that, that uh, you know, timing the, the pen riding after you're feeding, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any thoughts on recommending? I, I think it can be a useful tool. Um, the healthy, aggressive calves will come right up to the bunk um, when you drive by with the feed truck or the feed wagon, and a lot of those sick ones, the depressed ones, don't feel quite right, they'll hang out in the back of the pen. Um, won't be aggressive coming up the bunk and we can just go in and scoop them out. Scoop them out. And sometimes it's not just pulling them because they're sick. They may not be able to compete or they may be right. a passive calf and, and putting them in an environment where they can be competitive yeah. and feel comfortable going to the bunk. Can make a big difference on those. Having enough bunk space is important too. Yes it is. On these high risk calves. Yes it is. We gotta be able to get everybody at the bunk at the same time and have feet <laughs> available for everybody. <laughs> at any point in time. That's what everybody always eat. says to me, they go, how much bunk space should I allow? And I say, make them all fit. I sure appreciate y'all y'all being here on the show today. It's always great to have you. Thank you, I appreciate being here. We appreciate you watching the show as well. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Fries and I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local practitioner. We sure enjoy you watching the show today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Doc Talk. We'll see you down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. 
In the last three years, we've changed some things in our AI protocol, one of which was the use of multi-min. We've seen a significant increase in our AI pregnancy rate. The cost of an embryo program is significant, and we feel that if we were able to even get one more pregnancy out of, out of a cow, uh, that would pay for the whole cost of the whole bottle of multi-min right there.